the need for personal revival. Personal revival is where we have revival with ourselves. But as, as we looked at it some more, um, the Lord really led me to look at the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. And then this morning, as, as we were looking at that psalm, I, I thought about this being Lord's Supper, and the Lord kind of reminded me to remind you what 1 Corinthians 11 says, along with this 32nd Psalm. Let, let's just look at that 32nd Psalm for a moment beginning with the first version, just going down there a little bit. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom, to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, in whose spirit there is no deceit. Verse 3 says, when I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groanings all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. And then it says Selah. Now Selah is really a, a, a word telling you to pause and think about it. I just said, chew on this for a minute. And then David said, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. And I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And then it says, Selah, pause, and chew on this, and meditate on this. I read that 80% Or more of most illnesses today are spiritual or psychosomatic in origin. And, 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 and that makes that makes sense when you look at um, this is this is in the church not just out in the world, this is in the church. When you look at 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, where God is speaking about the Lord's Supper, and verse 25 says, well, verse 23 says, For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Then it comes down to say, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. Now let's get down right here now. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Now that's what David is doing in Psalm 32. 
let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you. And many sleep. He's saying because we don't examine ourselves according to the word and apply the word to our lives and therefore walk in the will of God, many are sick and many die early simply because we will not walk in the will of God. Amen? Are y'all with me now? I see why he didn't have me preach it last week because he knew this week was coming. I didn't, I, didn't get, I didn't get that part hooking this on until this morning. Now look at David. He said, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Amen? Transgression, sin, iniquity are all parts of sin. Amen? David breaks it down now, okay? Because Transgression, just the word literally means rebellion against authority. Are y'all with me? You, you see, when he says God forgives our transgression, it, it, it is saying that he literally bears it up and carries it away. That's what the priest did every year, once a year, when they brought the sin animal in and the sin animal left the camp and took the sin out of the camp. Amen. It didn't, it didn't work but for a minute because it was not the real thing. Amen. Jesus came once and for all and took the sin out of the camp if we accept him as Savior and Lord. See, we like the Savior part. You see, that's why in, 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 our, in, our, in our sermon, New Year's Eve from Joshua, when God said, it's your time, amen, it's your time, amen. He said, Moses is dead, but it's your time. You're talking about, you sitting around whining about who's dead. He's dead, it's your time, amen. Moses couldn't get you where I'm getting ready to send you because the law can't take you but so far. Amen. An uh, 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 animal walking out with your sin can only do so much because the real uh, 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 sacrificial lamb hasn't come. Amen. Amen. I started just continuing this, this uh, 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 Friday night's message because it is so powerful. When Joshua uh, uh, told the guy, said, the Lord said, in three days we're getting ready to get out of here. What we, what we haven't done in 40 years of hanging back here with the law and Moses, amen, we're getting ready to do it now with Joshua, amen. Moses was greater in the eyes of most than Joshua, but Joshua, Yeshua, amen, is a type of Christ, and the law can't get you no, but so far, amen, but Jesus can get you on over, and that's why he come back in that Joshua 1, and Joshua said, now I want y'all to prepare your victuals, amen, and pass over, amen, amen. You're getting ready to get a blessing. Prepare them, amen, and, and, and pass over and possess your possession, amen. They've been wandering for 40 years in the wilderness, amen, going round and round in circles because they was grumbling, complaining, and not obeying God, amen. And we're running round and round in circles now because we're grumbling, complaining, not seeing reality as it is by faith because we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith, amen. 
and, 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 and so we're not seeing reality as God sees it. So we cannot walk in the blessings of God. Amen. And Israel had wondered and wondered and wondered. And so God said to them, he said, now, as, as we said, uh, 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 New Year's Eve night, he said, I want you to pass over. You're getting ready to come out of this. Touch somebody and say, I'm getting ready to come out of this. Amen. I'm getting ready to come out of this. Amen. It's my time. I'm getting ready to come out of this. Amen. I think I'll just loosen up and just let God take me where he wants to take me. Is that, all, is that all right with anybody today? I'm getting ready to come out of this. Amen. What the great Moses couldn't do under the law, Joshua is getting ready to do it, amen, because the crowd that was following Moses, amen, amen, when they got that little Passover, amen, and got that little deliverance across the Red Sea, that was enough for them, amen. Some folk just say a little dab will do me, amen. But Joshua was patient, amen. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They had been waiting 40 years, he and Caleb, amen. Not knowing how God was going to do it, but knowing that he was going to do it. Amen, somebody? And, 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 and so God said, now get ready, amen. As C.D. Jake said, get ready, get ready, get ready, 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 amen. Get ready because, amen, you getting ready to move out. It's your time. Somebody sitting in here, you've been struggling, you've been wondering why you feel bad, why things ain't going right, amen, because you are walking in unforgiveness. It ain't about you being mad with somebody or somebody did something to you and, 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 and you haven't forgiven them. No, it's about you walking out of the will of God and God has taken his hand off of you and you don't realize it because he can't bless messes amen and most of us are struggling around in messes amen somebody and so he tells the says to Joshua now you getting ready to get another Passover amen that Passover back there amen got you out of Egypt amen out of the world amen that Passover back there got you into the wilderness amen where you getting bread every day now when you look at Exodus later on I can't go there today you see where God told Joshua around the fourth or the fifth chapter one of them he said today the last day you get ready to eat manna there ain't no more manna son you done come out of that stuff that the mother folk was in. Amen. You got the new Passover. Amen. And I told y'all when he said in three days, you're going to pass over. Amen. Three days is resurrection time. Amen. You getting ready to get a new resurrection. You getting ready to get a resurrection out of the old stuff into the new stuff. Amen, somebody. But before you get it, you got to, you got to bring some stuff to God. Amen. David said, I got to bring my transgressions and get them forgiven. <clears throat> Amen? Because blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Then I got to get my sin, sin covered. Amen? Transgression is when I uh, 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 rebel against authority. Amen? God will forgive that. But sin, amen, is when I just come short of God's glory, amen? When what I do in my walk, amen, brings me short of the glory of God. And Paul said in Romans 3, 23, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory. But the New Testament say we can get into a walk with God in such a way that everywhere we walk is glory. Because we're walking from glory to glory, amen? Even when it don't look like glory, we'll say glory anyhow. Amen, somebody? I told you, Henry, I don't see how we're going to bring these folk up tonight, didn't I? I said, I, I, said, I got to gotta find something else. Now, they, they, they're down. They see that pastor out there laying on the ground and struggling and, and gasping, amen, and all of that. I said, what, the, what can we do, amen? But there's something about when you just bring folk the word of God. And let folk know, no matter what's going on. I found out when the devil get word about something, amen, he will stir something up, amen. Amen, when Adam and Eve had everything going all right, the devil stirred something up, amen. Sent somebody into that life that made them go crazy, amen, and leave the blessings, amen. Amen. The devil will always make right look wrong and wrong look right. Amen, somebody? But David said, I don't feel right. Something is not going on right. Amen. 
And then he went on the Father. He said, not only my transgressions, but my sins, amen, but my iniquity has it, it need to be in, imputed, amen. And the word blessed means happy, amen. The, 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 the Hebrew there is happy. That's why the psalm says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but in his law, the word of God, does he meditate day and night? He'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water. The rivers of water represent the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will bend, but you won't break. When the storms come, you'll rock and roll. Amen. But when, the, when, when everything is over, you're going to come on back up. Amen. It's the word that is happy amen David is saying you're happy amen when your sins are forgiven and they're covered amen and your transgression is forgiven amen and the iniquity has been imputed iniquity is when we do what we know we shouldn't do but we like what we're doing we plan to keep on doing it and we keep on enjoying it amen that's iniquity but David said amen iniquity ain't gonna do it amen you will not walk where Joshua walked, amen. You will not walk out of the wilderness where you're sick, where you're frustrated, amen, where, where you don't seem to ever grab a hold of that real joy, amen, amen. That wilderness walk is a daily thing of just making it, amen. But God wants to take you on over to Canaan, the land of more than enough, amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. He wants you to, amen, get prepared. You, you can't go possess it till you're prepared to possess it. Amen. That's why you come to church every week. Amen. We met, we get the word, and we go on out, and we're the same folk that, that came in. Amen. We see it. Amen. The Bible says it's like a mirror. You see yourself in it, and then forget what you saw. But David said, I'm not going to forget what I'm seeing. Amen. He said, when I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groanings all day long. Amen. Have you ever been there where you had a fake smile? Where you had a fake test of lie? Instead of a testimony, it was a test of lie. Amen. Where that, where you was crying. Amen. Smiling to keep from crying. Amen, somebody. You praying prayers and your neighbor getting the answer and they're not even in church. You looking at how you so much better than they are and look like they doing so much better than you. Amen. But in the end, amen, it's going to even out. David said, I, 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 I was in a mess. Amen. I was, I was in a mess. My bones, amen, what, 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 what was hurting me. Amen. I felt like an old man. It's something about you can be young and feel old because you're walking out of the will of God. And you can be old and feel young. David said, I was young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody? Amen. The devil will make you old before you're old. Amen. And God can make you young when you're supposed to be old. Amen, somebody? All right, somebody. And, 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 and so David is aching. Amen. And, and the verb for grow old means to wear out and waste away. He felt like an old man. He said, all day long, I'm, I'm groaning. Now, groaning there can indicate not only hurting, amen, but can also indicate repressed anger. Sometimes you get angry. You know, you don't want to let folk know it. You don't even want to tell God, but you know you feel it. How come God? How come God? How come God? But you know what David said? David said, day and night your hand is heavy upon me. There is no relief. The heaviness in his body and spirit becomes so intense that, that, that he's feeling a pulling. Amen? First of all, he's feeling the pulling within himself, from himself. Amen? You know, we'll try to pretend this is all right, amen, and we'll fight God, say, I'm not going your way because I want to go this way. I like this way. Therefore, I ain't going. I know the Bible says this is the way walk you in it, but I'm not going that way. Amen, somebody? And, and we're pulling and fighting within ourselves, and then we're pulling and fighting against God because God will not help us to go that way. He will, he will put stuff in the way to try to make it hard so we'll want to turn to him. Amen, somebody? Are y'all hearing me today? This is kind of a teaching lesson, amen? You, you see, unforgiveness and unrepentance brings depression. Are y'all hearing me? It brings emotional pain and it brings alienation from God. Amen? 
We can tell God to go to hell and go out here somewhere in a, in a direction he told us not to go. Amen. But the time is going to come if you've really been saved, you're going to miss God's presence. Amen. That's why David said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew my, a right spirit in me. He said, what God has born is a broken and a contrite heart. Amen. He can do something with a broken and a contrite heart. That's why later on when David went, to, went, went, went back to God in Psalm 51, I believe, he said, my heart is fixed, O oh God. Oh, I know I did wrong. I lied. I lied. I did all kinds of stuff. Amen. I committed adultery. Amen. I, 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 I had a man murdered. I did all kind of mess. I, I'm in a mess. And I don't feel good. Amen. And he didn't know that he didn't feel good till the preacher came and told him. He talked about how this low down man did all this stuff. And David said he ought to be killed. The preacher said thou art the man. All of a sudden they said oh my God. Do I, am I really that dirty and low? Amen. But isn't God good? Isn't he good? Isn't he good? If we just turn. God did not, didn't intend for us to stay in the wilderness. That's why he sent Joshua to get them out of the wilderness. Are y'all hearing me today? That's why he sent him to get him out. Oh, I got I to hurry on. Amen. He wanted to bring him out. Amen. If I can, verse 6, for this cause, everyone who is God shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. He said, he said, he said, in a, we got to come to you, God, in a time when you may be found. If there's a time when he may be found, then there's a time when he won't be found. You know, Job looked for me for a while. He said, I went to my right. I couldn't find him. I went to my left. I couldn't find him. Where are you, God? Amen. I'm looking for you, but I can't find you. He was looking for a God who wasn't lost. But sometimes God can disappear on you, amen? Sometimes he does it to build you, amen, to make you look for a while. Other times he does it because we have driven him back to the point that we're dealing with a quenched spirit. Amen? We can throw so much at him until the spirit is quenched, amen? See, God don't bring y'all to church to get a spiritual high. We come to church and get this spiritual high. Oh, I lost you all on this shit called Dodia. And then we lay out to the church, and about an hour later, we drag it again. Amen. That's the spiritual high. He don't send you to church as a narcotic. He send you to get church to get you something deep. Something that's going to work tonight. Amen. Something that's going to work when the storm comes. Something's going to work when you, if your child dies. Something's going to work if, if, if the death angel come by your house. Something's going to work when the doctor shakes his head. Something that's going to work when you lose your job. Something that's going to work, amen, when you lose your house. You just, you just say, I know in whom I believe and my expectation is still here. I told you all the other night, don't never let the devil kill, kill your expectation. I don't care what the devil throw at me, what happened in my life, I still expect God to show up. And I told you all the other night, when God show up, he going to show out. Amen, somebody? Oh, he came by my house last month. Amen. But my expectations have not been lowered. Amen. Amen. David, amen, is, is letting us know. Amen. He'll, he, he'll make a way out of no way. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me today? For this call, everyone who is God that should pray to you in a time when you can be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. Amen. He said, he said, he said, he said, now, now that I have, now that I have seen, amen, what I need to see in those first two verses. He said, when I kept silent, amen, I, I, I mean, I grew old. But then verse five, I'm backing up a little bit. He said, what I did is I acknowledged my sin. Amen. If you want to get the burden lifted, if you want to get the benefit of verses 1 and 2, you've got to go to God like David and acknowledge your sin. Amen. And my iniquity have I not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Amen. Before I confess, I was in up here in verse 1. But when I confessed, amen, I saw the blessings of one and two. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. I stopped my groaning. I stopped my moaning. And I went to praising. Amen. I went to praising God because I found out when I called on you. Amen. In a time when you can be found. 
the flood of great waters shall not come near me. When the storm comes, they'll run by my door. When the enemy comes to knock, amen, he'll see the blood of Jesus over my door, amen. When somebody come to take my job, they might take that job, but God got a better one down the street, amen. Amen, somebody. It's hard to leave what you're comfortable in. Let me tell you something. I'm teaching today. I, I, I would holler here. Let me share something with you. Brother Wilson, do you remember almost 47 years ago when you guys said y'all was calling me to be your pastor? You remember I told you I ain't coming? I said, I ain't coming. My pastor, Reverend Buckman, had all made, it, made arrangements for me to go to Richmond to succeed the great Dr. Weathers. Reverend Buckman was moderating the meeting, so it was cut and dry. I was going that Friday, they had already made reservations for me to go to the National Baptist Convention. They hadn't even called me. We were so cut and dry. Amen? Amen? And y'all know, y'all know his picture's on my wall now. For years, I didn't, I didn't call Reverend Hayes my pastor. That wasn't right. But I was so in love with Reverend Buckman, nobody could be my pastor. Like Dr. Oatree, he's still my doctor. He's been gone about 20 years now. Amen. But, but, but when, we, when, 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 when I got up that Sunday morning to go to Richmond, the Lord said, okay, so you going on over there, huh? I'm a, I was such a Baptist, I called Peter a Baptist preacher. Amen. I'd argue Baptist with anybody, amen? I didn't wear no, nothing but dog socks and white shirts. I still don't hardly do that, amen? Because that's how Reverend Buckman liked it, amen? Amen? And all of a sudden, I realized to do what God said. I can still feel it. I had to walk away from the denomination I loved. My mother was all Baptist. I did everything in the Baptist church. I'd done every job in the Baptist church. Played the piano, directed music, been a deacon, uh, been a youth director, been an usher, uh, been a pianist, been, you know, Sunday school superintendent, Baptist through and through. And all of a sudden, God is saying, even my mother said, it's just eight but a handful of folk over there, honey. They ain't doing nothing. I cried. Because God said, that's what you got to do. I left the denomination I loved. I left the pastor I loved. I left all my buddies. Y'all recall, Reverend Buckman had me blackballed. They wouldn't even ordain me in this town. George Brown and Marion bucked all the Baptist preachers here and called the council and did it anyway. Amen? But I went where God said go. Y'all remember? Y'all remember when I walked down that aisle? I cried. I was leaving everything. But here at 80, I found out if you leave everything and everybody, all this, your, your comfort zone to walk where God say walk and do what God say do, he will strengthen you. And even when we lost the church, the 10 buses, the three radio, isn't it amazing? Last week we were going over all the things that happened there. Seen a hundred baptized in a week. Guys around here had never seen none of that. Amen? You know, all because we did what God said. And when, they, when we lost the church because we stood on the Bible, they said, you got to go by that discipline. I said, no, it's the Bible only. And we threw it in the trash. They came at us with wrath, the white establishment, even the courts. But here we stand at 80. Looking forward to another step. Amen. It's our time. Amen. Don't, don't, don't ever, don't ever, ever, ever doubt God. All right. This is not a screaming, hollering sermon today. I'll jump to a few places because this, this is something to get us going in the right direction. Don't doubt God. And isn't it, isn't it amazing? We end up coming back. I was very active in the Progressive National Baptist Convention. This very church, when we had Baptists in our name, when Progressive Convention, when Martin Luther King helped start, celebrated their 25th anniversary in Cincinnati. 
unbelievably, I was one of the speakers. I substituted for Dr. Benjamin Mays, who couldn't make it, president of Morehouse. Little unknown hill, because Dr. Booth, one of the founders, had me to preach. He made a statement at that time. He said, you are the best kept secrets in Ohio. He had never heard me preach until in Cincinnati. My point is, when you walk with God, it ain't a perfect walk, because we're not perfect folk. It's not a walk without some stumbling blocks, but it's a wonderful journey. It's a wonderful journey. Not what can you do for me, Lord, what can I do for you? This is the way the Bible said, walk ye in it. Now this today is a fatherly chat. This is a fatherly chat. I'm not telling you where I read, I'm telling you where I've been. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. And, and, and so David said, many sorrows shall, shall be with the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous. Shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Amen. At the very conclusion, David contrasts the wicked with the faithful. Amen. Sorrows there mean pain, many pains for the unrepentant, those who say, I don't care what you say, I'm going on this way. Amen. But then he said, but mercy, that thing that come out of the covenant love of God will surround you with songs of deliverance. You see, verse 7 talks about songs of deliverance. You see that? He said, he said when I walk with God, look at that, I'm, I'm through now, I've got a hiding place. My daughter Tony, who went to go with the Lord, you know that, that song, The Hiding Place, that was, her, that was her strength. Nobody understood how she could fight five cancers, different ones, and battle like she did and have them to hit her with so much radiation that they burnt her head to the point that it was a huge sore. Amen. And all she ever wanted was her daddy to come by and touch her every day. Amen. Amen. But when you walk with him, there's a hiding place. Sometimes you're hurt. Things will come your way. And you say, how can I handle them? But when you walk with him, there's a hiding place. And every time you go to the hiding place, you come out strengthening for the journey. Amen? That ought to be our challenge this year. That ought to be our challenge. Some of y'all have been with me long enough to have seen it work. You have seen it work. You've seen things happen that couldn't have been me, it was God. We even sit in a building. And I love to tell people, we built this building with zero in a building fund. It was God. How do you do that? All we needed was new bathrooms and trying to put a ramp on an old building and God said, I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to let you hook a building on the ramp that you didn't have enough money to, to build. Amen? So our challenge this year is to listen to every week when we come. See yourself in the Word and trust God enough to do something about it. And watch how we're going to sail as a church. This is a father chat today. I hope I got it over to you. Amen? Amen. The power of forgiveness. Don't come to church. I, God don't want you to come to church to be condemned every week. Condemned, yes, to the point of saying, if I see myself, what do I do? And then do it. Because God didn't, Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came to save you, to bless you. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. 
thief coming but to steal, kill, and destroy. And the devil can hide himself and look like a child of light. Amen? You see common men out here all the time. Every week you look on TV and see another, especially a woman, that's put some man over her children and he's killed them or injured them because the devil know how to come and look like he's a child of light and take advantage of that natural motherly instinct. 